Medicare for all, forcing to vote on that would have not been that. It would have ended in humiliation, would have made the party look silly, not only because force to vote would have failed. So we've already watched the debate that Bosch and Brianna Joy Gray had on the issue of, wait, what was it on? I can't believe I already forgot. Um, it was on, oh yeah, it was on if Brianna Joy Gray was enabling fascists. And honestly, even though I disagreed with Brianna Joy Gray, uh, she didn't perform too terribly. Uh, I know Destiny thinks that Vosh did very, very poorly. I think he did okay. Um, but I don't think Brianna, but, but I don't think he was able to like hold Brianna Joy Gray on, like down on many points until later in the conversation. And Brianna Joy Gray was prepped. And of course she added clips in hindsight, which made her perspective look even better when uploading it to YouTube afterwards. So we're gonna move on to the next debate after watching the first one, which I think maybe you could classify it as a wash. This one is debating force the vote. Now it's Vosh debate part two. Should force the vote detractors be held accountable? Because Vosh uh, was very against force to vote. And I'll tell you in advance, I'm against force to vote. Now, when we were having the discussion about force to vote, uh, the discussion that I that I was hearing was we need to for we need to basically withhold our votes for Nancy Pelosi until she has a vote on Medicare for all. I oppose that. Now people afterwards are trying to do some rewriting of history, and that force of vote wasn't about um, forcing Nancy Pelosi to hold a vote on the House floor on Medicare for all if he wanted to have the speakership. Now force to vote is about in hindsight, according to many people was about holding Nancy Pelosi to any demands, whether it was marijuana legalization, whether it was committee position, any demands, which is kind of some, you know, retroactive adjusting of what actually happened when people were talking about force to vote, whether it was Jimmy, uh, uh, Jimmy Dore or the rest of them. That's how it was being discussed. It was not being discussed as force to vote on literally anything. It was forced to vote on Medicare for all, which was a terrible idea because we would be spending our political capital. We'd be damaging the relationship that many Congress people would have with Nancy Pelosi, possibly losing certain powerful committee positions if we're trying to invest for something this big only for the vote to fail on the House floor, not to even pass the House floor to the Senate, but to fail on the House floor only at max getting one third of House votes. Now, people talked about, well, but later down the line, we'll be able to look back and say, oh, well, these people don't support Medicare for all, so we primary them. That is not worth the amount of damage we would be doing to the efforts to get better committee positions. And we could just ask politicians if they would support Medicare for all. And there's a decent chance that us making it a, a referendum on Nancy Pelosi could also undermine the effort of trying to get people who would regularly not be in favor of Medicare for all on board with it. Anyway, let's watch the video. I don't think uh, the original force to vote conversation, not this kind of new retroactive changing of history force to vote conversation, but that original force to vote conversation, I still believe in what I said at the time, that it was not a good use of time, energy, or resources, and that it would be better to force to vote on something else like marijuana legalization or something that was more achievable, stronger committee positions, etc. Now let's watch Vosh and Brianna Joy Gray discuss it. I have not obsessed <laughs> over anything in my life as much as Jimmy is obsessed over FTV. I don't even, I, I couldn't remember my own name with but, the clarity but, but and precision that he has brought up FTV. But let's let's talk about why. No, we I, had so such I, a good conversation. No, we no, were but, almost but, there. Gosh, this, is, this, is, this is what's so important. But I'm think. telling you I, that I initially did not care that much about this. But my issue has been the way it's been used uh, to cynically. That's, that's a little unfair, Vosh, because I, I heard you, I've heard you say, you, I've heard you criticize the strategy as not effective, not smart strategy in ways that are completely undermined by what we saw happen with the conservatives two weeks ago. Uh, just to be clear to everyone, just so everyone remembers, force the vote isn't like a broader ideology or something. It's a strategy, not a very good one at that, but even leaving that aside, that literally only could have been a thing two years ago. They're, they were wrong to begin with, or at the very least, they were unjustified in a lot of their statements. The specific force the vote movement was one of the most blatant grifts that got passed as left-leaning activism in the past several years. There was literally no history in which anyone but Nancy Pelosi became the Speaker of the House. There was- That, that is true. The part about there's not like any chance. Like if Nancy Pelosi didn't become Speaker of the House, the only other options when this force to vote thing was going on were more conservative Democrats. 
I'm, like there could have been like more left wing Democrats that run, but the only ones with the shot of actually a- achieving the speakership were more conservative Democrats or Democrats who would have tried to reach across the aisle to get Republicans to vote for a more conservative Democrat over Nancy Pelosi with the logic of, hey, Republican, I know you don't like Nancy, but maybe you can get a blue dog Democrat in there instead. I know it's not a Republican, but it's not Nancy Pelosi. And we know how much Republicans despise Nancy Pelosi, right? Now, people talk about a Repub- Democrats voting for Republican, and I guess that is possible, but I think less likely. I, I really don't know. But point is, no matter what, the only the only other options that we're going to actually get through at the time, because we just do not have enough progressive people in there, enough people in the progressive caucus, enough progressives in Congress to make a progressive the Speaker of the House at the moment, uh, the only more other option was a more conservative Democrat. And so we would have had to balance force the vote, whether it was forcing the vote or something that was actually achievable or the nonsense that Jimmy Dore and others were trying to push that never had a chance of succeeding. Um, we would have had to ro- walk a fine line between um, pissing off Nancy Pelosi and making her give concessions and making sure that a not, not a other person who would make no concession and would be more conservative gets the speaker gets the speakership because we wouldn't want that. We wouldn't want that at all. There was no avenue for any other. And I think that part of why some of us are frustrated and continue the conversation perhaps longer than you would like is because there's absolutely no acknowledgement of how many lies are being spread. Oh, Kevin McCarthy can become speaker of the house. Oh, it won't work unless you have an alternative speaker in question. You know, you, you can't make X, Y, and Z kind of ask these kind of asks are inappropriate, but they wouldn't suggest alternative asks that I think I and a lot of other people would have been down for. So, I mean, do you see now? That, that's the thing, right? Post post this all, you know, after the fact, anybody looks back and says, force the vote on Medicare for all. That seems to, with reflection for most people, maybe not Jimmy Dore, seems to be seen as kind of silly. But now it's like, well, what about an alternative ask? Something else on forcing the vote on? That wasn't the conversation at the time. The conversation at the time wasn't, let's force the vote on infrastructure reform. Let's force the vote on uh, increased spending on Social Security and lifting the cap on Social Security to save it. And that wasn't what was being discussed. And uh, and by the way, stuff like that, I would have supported. Stuff that was achievable, I would have supported that, right? I would have even supported it on something like legalization of marijuana on the federal level, even though only half of states now, with the recent addition of Maryland and a few other states, now the majority of Americans now live in states where marijuana is to some degree like legal, like legal uh, recreationally, I believe. Now... Doing that on the federal level would be difficult because that's still 25 states. You got to you gotta be able to get on board uh, or not get on board, but you got to get some more people on board with that. But that's still more achievable than forced to vote on Medicare for all, which was not achievable at the time and would have only got it could have only ended in failure and humiliation for the Medicare for all crowd, which would have been used to lambast Medicare for all for how many years in the future and forced to vote would have came with the same criticisms that the Republicans got right now. So we would have gotten nothing out of it. We got got, would have gotten nothing out of it and all the the chaos and inability to rule that the Republicans showcased through their kind of, I guess you can call their forced to vote process through 17 like house votes, however many it was, like the most in 160 something years, right? That would have fell at the feet of Democrats. And if Democrats are going to take that public PR hit, that could hurt them down the line, show them as the party who is unable to rule, the party of chaos, which Republicans are trying really hard to label us as. If we're going to take that hit, we got to take it for good reason, not to virtue signal a Medicare for all. Oh, post what, what the Republicans have done, do you think it was a, do you agree that it was a legitimate plan and one that the left probably should have engaged in two I think years it would ago? have been fine to do from the get go. I do think there's a difference in how the right and the left handle these situations. The right does not care about its rabble rousers. You know, the louder and more obnoxious you are as a conservative politician, the more your voters love it. They don't care. Whereas, of course, if, you know, if AOC so much as coughs, um, you know, over Nancy Pelosi, you're going to get like a 68 hour MSNBC, you know, uh, uh, a runtime on how disrespectful she's being. But that, didn't that happen um, to the Republicans, too? Fox would, News was not on board with this project. There's, yeah, but there's a more ideological diversity over there. But the there media is, but was against cut, them. Though. The, the, the media was the institution of the GOP was, but I feel like the, the, the populists on the right, I say populists here very loosely, they're not really populists, they're just more openly fascist. Um, 
you know, I feel like they're usually able to get more out of their party because the the the, the corporate GOP doesn't fear them as much. Like I said before, because they don't really challenge capital. But, but you I, said earlier. I don't think there's a difference. I think the point is that the, the well, people so. on the left would have rally behind a just excuse me a just claim by people like AOC or other pro pro uh, progressives you got to pick the ask right you got to make sure it's not how to be honest i think part of the reason also that the right the far right were able to actually get concessions is that the concessions they got were a lot less impactful on the budget far less impactful on a reform for the like a just general like system in the United States, like everything they got as concession, none of it would be as big, even if you combined it all together as Medicare for all would have been. Medicare for all, massive government program, massive government program, completely changes the face. Definitely if you're gonna be banning private insurers, which a lot of people kind of like are dicey on this, but the original Medicare for all plan, like the Bernie Sanders one, would ban private insurers and have everybody on the same healthcare plan, right? There's like different versions that have been proposed by different people like Tulsi Gabbard and others that maybe tries to keep private insurers. And like, there's, there's like a plan that like, I think was made down the line. I think Bernie Sanders like reformed it be able to be like well you can keep your private insurer but they're da, da, da. all of that any version of that would be 10 times 100 times who knows how many times more massive and would have came with more backlash than anything the far right put on the table to get them their more powerful committee positions get them the ability to ha call a roll call on whether uh kevin mccarthy should say speaker or any other the concessions they got so i i do think it's okay to compare strategies here but let's also remember like the difference of what the asks were which i think is the key component the self-interest and if i remember correctly i do think aoc and others did get some pre pretty decent committee positions through their votes for Nancy Pelosi. Uh, I would have to go back and check. I would have to go back and check the specific of the, com the committee position stuff. Interested stuff and that they're fighting for things that are very popular in the public, including among conservatives, things like $15 minimum wage and health care and yada, yada, yada. I think there could have been good ass there. I, I, my but main, the, the, the main efficacy point that I made that really bugged me was when people were saying the FTV could have been used to do like a roll call. Also, let's say $15 minimum wage. As far as I know, the Biden administration supports $15 minimum wage. They tried to actually try to get it through. It failed. But what, what would be the $15 minimum wage ask for force to vote? that we forced the Democrats to vote again on $15 minimum wage? If it failed one time, why would it succeed a second time? What would be the goal there? Would it be what? Yeah, AOC was on three committees, yeah. But um, like, like Joe Manchin still wouldn't have voted for it and he would have needed all 50 Senate votes and you would have needed to break the filibuster, which is also something that Joe Manchin wouldn't have agreed to. So you would have gotten needed to get Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema to not only agree to a $15 minimum wage and agree. And the idea you're going to get Joe Manchin to Joe Manchin to agree to a $15 minimum wage in Virginia, West Virginia, one of the, which has one of the lowest cost of living in the country. And if we were to do an adjusted to cost of living all across the country, minimum wage would have one of the lowest in the country. You're not going to get him to agree to that period. But let's say you did get him and Kirsten Cinema to agree to a $15 minimum wage in the Senate. You would then have to get Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema to agree to get rid of the filibuster, which both have been outspoken and their commitment not to get rid of the filibuster, which is their selling point. Uh, which which is Kirsten Cinema uh, Cinema's selling point to her constituents, which seems to be fact by backfiring on her as she's moving over to the independent side and she's trying to like like kind of market herself as the moderate reformer. She it's it seems to be taking more of a hit on her a reputation amongst Democrats in uh, Arizona. But Joe Manchin Joe Manchin seems to be as of right now the only Democrat that can win that seat, and so the Democrats in West Virginia don't really want to play any games. When it comes to Joe Manchin and and, and risking um, him losing, because if he loses, most likely a Republican will replace him, and then we'll lose that Senate seat permanently. So, oh, thank you. So, any benefits that they could see from Joe Manchin currently being in office on all the stuff we have gotten done when it comes to investments into the country, like immediately wiped away by him being gone. And Democrats of West Virginia will not want to play that game. So, I don't understand how fifteen dollars would have been a better ask. Um, I guess like maybe we could have like you could have asked for it to be pushed more, maybe. 
Um, marijuana legalization, I don't think we necessarily even could have gotten on the federal level at the time, considering how divided the House is. But I also think that marijuana legalization is actually more popular than um, Medicare for all when the polling, when I can think of the polling data. Uh, definitely when it comes to at least decriminalization on uh, uh, on a federal level across the country, not only on like the federal level on federal property, but across the country. Um, it's the, it's more popular than Medicare for all. Definitely when you get into the specifics, right? Where if you get into the, uh, the bottom, if you get into the specifics behind Medicare for all, when you talk about keeping your private uh, health care provider, that's something very popular. That's something that mil millions of Americans want. Maybe that would have been a better option. My, my point is, I don't know why $15, $15 an hour would have been a better option here. I don't understand why that would have been a better option. It had more chance of succeeding, but it still had some very clear hurdles. Vote on Medicare for all that everyone knows wouldn't have passed and would have been nothing more than an Look, empty if, virtue if, if you don't like I also think we probably could have hit Republicans harder on them being the Freedom Party if we were to have a vote on legalization on marijuana and it was to just barely lose and we know it was because of the Republicans because it would have been because of the Republicans. Uh, whereas Medicare for all, it probably would have been harder since it would have lost with also a lot of Democrats on there as well. And it, I don't think it's as overwhelmingly popular as marijuana legalization is. That but ask, if it's and committee appointments, then, you know, if, I think if you don't like that ask, you don't have to like that ask. But also, these aren't mutually exclusive. So let them do their roll call vote. Also demand committee appointments. You could demand the earth, the wind and the sky. It doesn't matter because until you vote for until those four women or whomever in the squad vote for Nancy Pelosi, her ass wasn't becoming Speaker of the House. And that was an incredible amount of power to squander. It, it does matter because if they're too obnoxious, it ends up being an optical loss. But yes, I agree they could have done more with that. No, but I the just... point that we're, we were making, though, is that even though there was <laughs> no. an optical loss on the right, no, this is important. Even though Fox News was not on board with this, the Republican Party wasn't on board with this, the people, conservatives, loved this. And you said that the conservative, they like the, the voter, conservative voter loves rabble rouser more than Democratic voter. I don't think that that's true. I think that there would be a lot of excitement and energy for uh, among the people if you saw someone actually fighting for you in Congress. Why do I believe that? Because that's the entire repeal of Bernie Sanders in 2020 and 2016. But they voted for Biden. The Dude, I, I do think that, that that she's making a valid argument about the rabble rousers having their place in the party. But we also know that this came with a cost for Republicans when it comes to their public image. And so falling on the sword for Medicare for all when it had no chance to make any sense. And now it's like, well, the ass could have been anything. And now it's like, okay, then I agree with the sentiment of the strategy if it was something that's achievable, something that could benefit Americans in the here and now, and not something like, well, this is part of a 20-step plan, so 30 years down the road we can get Medicare for all because we obviously couldn't get past it now. I, I, I would have been more on board with that. That is something I could have supported. But that was not the original conversation for forced to vote because it was forced to vote on Medicare for all. At least rabble rabble. That's why it's called force to vote. Force to vote on Medicare for all. Human yeah, for industry. the reasons that you just described. You know perfectly well why they voted for Biden. Because Democrats had to are do cocked. With... Because they're small brain bitch baby liberals who wouldn't get out of bed each morning if they weren't who, told to the previous who, day by who MSNBC. Who else were they supposed to vote for? Fauch, Bernie dropped out and immediately endorsed Biden, so well, they, Biden that, was the candidate. Biden was the pe was the person that they they you know sort of cajoled he, he was the candidate. support for in the primary. So who who the were they supposed to rabble rouse behind? Well, there was my, nobody. That's my point. There's well, never anybody to rabble rouse. But that's my point. The in the primaries, won't do it. Democrats don't do it. In the 2016 primaries, Donald Trump came in the you know maverick or whatever the underdog, and then he screamed and shouted and you know, insulted people all the way up to the top. Republicans love that stuff. It's gladiator sports to them. I respect it, frankly. It's better than what we have. Unfortunately, the average conservative is stronger emotionally. Than like, the do you think, do you think that they would have gotten, Brianna Joy Gray and Jimmy Dore would have gotten such a response, a vitriolic response at the time during the forced to vote conversation if it was forced to vote on a legislation that is really could pass and would benefit the lives of everyday people. No, I don't think anybody would have gov given as vitriolic or as hard a response as they got because they really got a lot of backlash from from people for the proposal of what I thought was a silly idea, what a lot of other people thought was a silly idea, but so did people on the other end because Jimmy Dore's community was particularly vitriolic on the issue, calling anybody who would not force a vote on Medicare for All right now a sellout because they don't want to waste time and make the party look bad and, and get nothing out of it.
right? So I, 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 again, like we're reframing the conversation now, but this was not the conversation we had on Force to Vote two years ago. The average liberal when it comes to their propensity for watching politicians duke it out. So yeah, I, but ge I genuinely the claim that think- I, That's the claim that I'm disagreeing with right there. Re you I think th that really, you're... you think liberals are better at that? I think that there is a, an appetite for seeing people within the Democratic Party fight for the interests of working people Man, among I, Democrats, I wish. just like there is among Republicans. However, you never get to see it tested and it's never really encouraged because the Democratic Party, you saw this with the force of vote moment last week, the Democratic Party prides itself on solidarity behind people as evil as Hakeem Jeffries, who spent the last two years trying yeah, I gotta to- I got to say like, Hakeem Jeffries, when he was getting hit, he got every single vote, right? It didn't really matter because he wasn't going to become speaker, right? It was a very, very small chance to become spe speaker. He would have to win over how many Republicans, like an amount that was basically impossible. But um, when Hakeem Jeffries was getting voted for, like every single time they said, Hakeem Jeffries has gotten these many votes, like every Democrat would get up and like, I don't want to like say it's like a cult or whatever, but it looked almost like those North Korean clapping uh, videos where they clap for like 10 minutes and like Kim Jong-un is just like waving like this for 10 minutes. It looked like that with Hakeem Jeffries with all the networks like, ah, Jeffries, Jeffries. Like they were, they were getting rowdy for him, man. Like it was a college football game. The past law, um, you know, not like laws, laws, but rules within the Democratic Party that would keep progressives out of office. Raising money with Josh Gottheimer and Terry Sewell and this super PAC to try to keep more progressives from getting into Congress. Blacklisting vendors who had the audacity to set up lights for or cater a progressive yeah, candidate trying to get in, into they don't Congress. Give a shit. He's civil. He's got a smile. And, exactly. And despite him doing all of that, all of the people that he's attacked for the last two to four years or whenever this progressive thing started in 2018 clapped for him, cheered him on as an amazing poet as he did that corny acrostic, took selfies, championing how much they were all in line behind Hakeem Jeffries. And to me, that's the most dangerous thing. As a leftist right now, that is the exact kind of solidarity that I feel like is our job to be breaking up and attacking. And I don't think it causes Republicans to win then, then by I'm asking Republi to, to the left to fight as hard as the right is going to fight. If it doesn't in any way assist the Republicans, then I support it. I but will you say I have some force trepidation. To vote. No, no, no. I because swear. force to vote was silly. It was silly. The ask was not, well, actually force to vote on anything that would benefit the people. Right. Because if that was the thing, then it'd be OK. I could find some legislation we could force a vote on. I think would be good because there was a lot of stuff that Mitch McConnell was keeping in the legislative graveyard, which he knew if it would have came to a vote would have made them look bad. Right. Not just look bad because it would have only been Republicans voting against it, but would have also had a possible chance of succeeding uh, and, and better in a different legislative situation. Right. Something that was close to succeeding could have succeeded or would have just been an overall dunk. Medicare for all, forcing to vote on that would have not been that. It would have ended in humiliation, would have made the party look silly, not only because force to vote would have failed in, in, in getting, you know, Medicare for all passed. It would have made the progressives look bad, not because, oh, it was kind of close. Like, if it was by one or two votes, it's like, whatever. But no, it would have been by curb stomping. Wouldn't have even gotten through the House. Wouldn't have gotten to the Senate, right? Burns And in it would have delayed Nancy corrupt. Pelosi from Thank becoming corrupt, speaker. Man. And we would have had the same humiliating circumstances that Republicans had for a week as they were trying to get Kevin McCarthy in there and had the most votes they had to have over and over for a speaker in over 162 years. Now, people could say, oh, but that's, you know, that's just politics. It's always like that. Like, there's always division during speaker's votes. Again, it was the most votes for speakership in 162 years. The Republicans looked like they couldn't govern. They didn't look good. And so I, it's not that I, I think, oh, we can never make the party look bad. But if we do, it has to be for a good reason. Couchman11111, thank you so much for the two want to be itself for 14 months. I appreciate it. I swear to God, my, my issue was mostly with how it was handled, principally the idea of extracting concessions or at least arguing over committee appointments, I'm okay with. The problem that I have is that there are a lot of people uh, on the social media space who have very cynically used it as a flux point to attack the squad and define their entire identity by being the left, but not like that. And then they go on and spend like their entire lives, their fourth being the left who's anti this. No, 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 we, no, we know, we know I don't this disagree. I just, I just have to say that I disagree, but go ahead. I don't no. think that's a fair criticism, but go ahead. Okay, well, it's a, it's a, it's a tendency that many have, many have claimed has happened. Um, anyway, I have an issue with how it's been used. I don't think the squad's perfect. I think they've made plenty of mistakes. I mean, God, that AOC, I don't know, I don't know what kind of 
toenail screwing Pelosi was doing behind the scenes, but that vote on the Iron Dome shit. You remember yes. that? Yeah. I, I just did a radar on it, in fact. Yeah, I okay. mean, it's, I know that no, no, people only want to talk about my radars that they find to be fascistic or whatever, but I spend most of my time advocating for things like Medicare for all and wealth taxes and calling out. I said, and, and that radar I explained, um, that AOC could have taken that moment and come forward and exposed whatever arm twisting is going on behind the scenes, whatever kind of corporate regressive pernicious pressure that people like Nancy Pelosi are wielding behind the scenes. Instead, she continues to tacitly, I'm not saying it's evil in her heart, but she is in effect covering for Nancy Pelosi and the establishment when she does her bidding without simply outing what made her cry on the House floor that day. No, I, I agree, especially because she's in such a safe district. You know, they yes. would have to twist some major strings to have even a chance of getting yes. her not and AOC reelected. was. You, I'm, sure, I'm sure you saw the AOC clip on her Instagram the other day after the whole force of vote Republican thing where she says she's, you know, she's she's criticizing Marjorie Taylor Greene saying Marjorie Taylor Greene um, was in a, I'm oh, sorry, she's going to say anything Lauren Boebert, saying Lauren Boebert was in a, almost lost her seat. And somehow so like close. that, that is why, that is why it's good for me not to have done force the vote. But it's like, no, it's the opposite. Marjorie Taylor Greene almost lost her seat and was still willing to go up against the Republican establishment. Marjorie Taylor Greene did not almost lose her seat. Lauren Boebert almost lost her seat. For dumb stuff, to be clear, but was still willing to take on that risk when you're in a safe seat and aren't willing to stick your neck out for anything. I mean, uh, well, that's the whole problem. The, go the, ahead. The main point that I'll front here and something I'm really interested in seeing is what would happen if you had a lefty or at least a populist in the Democratic Party who was openly antagonistic to the machinations within the party. You know, That's what we want Ber to see. Bernie Sanders was a real nice guy. I love him. Uh, AOC, the rest of the squad, they're clearly keeping quiet uh, to an extent. I'm sure, now this is just st standard politics, right? Like every political party to some extent has to twist people's arms behind the scenes. That's literally the point of a political party. It makes sense. But obviously this is going beyond like standard, uh, uh, you know, like grouping people together and it's gone into more extensive, like ideological constraints. Mm -hmm. um, I would love to see what would happen, like what media cycle would come about from from AOC. Just I don't know, waking up at the wrong side of the bed and going, eh, yeah, okay, fuck it, sure, fine, I'll go on, uh, I'll go on Insta. We'll talk about this the whole day, you know. I'll, I'll I'll throw a fuss. I'd be happy to see that. My current belief is that the average Democrat is a bitch baby who would respond poorly to any kind of disruption within the party, no matter how well handled by the left. But I, I if think that that's was, true, if that was but I don't challenged, care. <laughs> if, if it was improved, if I could believe there was a positive outcome, because that's what I'm in it for. The, the yes. left can try it whatever they want, you know, but if, if at the end of the day it doesn't do anything, I just don't care. If it turns out something good can come of it, or if it opens up a road to something good in the future, then I might be a little bit it, more... Isn't it hard? Is, isn't there something kind of in the aggregate self-defeating, isn't there something very limiting about saying, I'm only supportive of taking that kind of a political risk if I can guarantee that there's a positive outcome? Look, I could- What? Okay, I, I, I don't think it's if you can guarantee there's a positive outcome, but if you have a reason to believe that there's a decent chance it'll have a positive outcome. Like, like I, I do not think we should be rolling the dice with low odds on force to vote Medicare for all if it's just gonna make our party look silly and make Medicare for all look like an abject failure legislatively. Like forcing the vote on something that has a better chance of succeeding than it fails, I'm gonna feel, you know, less bad about because at least we took the risk on something that had a chance of succeeding. There was zero chance under any conditions that forcing the vote would have succeeded in getting the politicians to sign on to it. At that point, it would have, there was no shot we had not built up the ground game to pressure them for it. We had not built up the the uh, the lobby groups, the lobbyists, or get everybody necessary to pressure the politicians. We did not get enough commitment from politicians. We there was a million things we had not gotten on getting Medicare for all passed at the time. Uh, so it would have just ended in failure, and we knew it would have ended in failure. And when you talked to people like. Brown and Joy Gray at the time and said there's no chance it succeeds here, most of them would have acknowledged that, yeah, it didn't. So this isn't the question of like, well, you know, does everything have to have a 100% chance of, sex, of success? No, that's not the question. The question is, should we kamikaze for Medicare for all knowing we get nothing out of it? Completely get wanting to calculate 
that there's a likelihood maybe of a positive outcome. But this is, I think, where people like Jimmy Dore, I'm sorry, are coming from. I didn't say it. Jimmy didn't say it. AOC said that she'd rather be a one-term congressperson than abandon her ideals and stop fighting for the things that she thought was so important. AOC positioned herself as someone, and Kyle Kalinske says this all the time. He's there. He's part of the Justice Democrat effort that brave new, con- whatever, that got them all elected. So if he, he says the point of why we fought for them to get into Congress was for them to do exactly that. So for them to not then be doing that, honestly, they should be doing that regardless of whether or not there's a positive outcome. I mean, they should obviously be trying for a positive outcome, not just randomly throwing rocks. It would help if they'd give it a shot, you know. Right. But like, and this is, so again, I, look, I don't necessarily, I, I, I don't necessarily obviously take the You're t- calling me same, a cuck again. How, how am I doing that? No, I'm just because like, <laughs> you're not willing to take a risk. I do get it, by the way. Um, I would be, I'd be much more open to experimentation if I wasn't so concerned about the, um, uh, I don't know, the death camps or whatever. So, but, okay, so um, but broadly, I, I agree yeah. that it's, you need, you need to experiment to some extent because there's so no this, safe this way is, forward. This is what is so frustrating. I feel like this is, I'll just speak for myself and not other members of my side of the left. I feel like I have gone out of my way as someone who was, especially two years ago, very timid in this space, not someone who has a long history in politics, willing to defer to the opinions of a lot of other people. I've spent two years having union organizers and journalists and elected officials and historians and novelists and musicians and old people, young people, everyone in the world on my show trying to vet these ideas. I'm not someone who's just like, oh, I think I know the right thing to do. I have instincts. I have good, what I think are above average analytical skills, but I don't know the right answers to things. But after talking to person after person after person, it's what it seems to me to be the problem is that there's a crisis on the left where nobody is willing to do anything unless it's a guaranteed success for some of the reasons that you articulated. So I have gone out of my way, I believe, to try to focus on opportunities that- Hyper mode, thank you so much for the tier one and being sub for 34 months on a 32 month streak. Damn, you've been here for a while. Thank you, I appreciate it. Woof, long time supporter. Would not cost the broad left anything. That's why force the vote was so crucial, because whereas sometimes you hear you hear liberals arguing, you hear Democrats arguing, well, and AOC argued this in her little clip recently. Sorry, that was that was patronizing. AOC argued this in her clip recently. I'm sorry. I don't mean to. I'm sorry. She said she said, um, you know, Republicans, it's easy for them to hold stuff up because they don't want to get anything done anyway. But Democrats want the legislation to pass. So we we can't force You know, we can't hold folks hostage in the same way. Now, me, you know me, I'm the one who would abolish the FBI. So I, w- I would burn it. I would take the risk and burn it out. But even if you're not me, and I respect that most people aren't, force the vote, the only negative thing that was on the line, the only downside was that some broad named Nancy Pelosi doesn't get to be Speaker of the House. She used the term broad. Oh, my goodness. I felt like I just got sent back 100 years. What? I Okay, broad. Well, I mean, again, let's say Nancy Pelosi doesn't get to be Speaker of the House. Who does? There would be a Speaker of the House. They would just keep hosting votes till someone was Speaker. And most likely, it would not be a more progressive person that would have became Speaker of the House. It would have probably been a more conservative person. Who would have been the progressive person who who would have become Speaker of the House? Because it would have probably been... Hakeem Jeffries, who I don't know if she thinks Hakeem Jeffries is more progressive than Nancy Pelosi, which he isn't. So I, I, I don't think she thinks he is either. Um, it would have been probably somebody to her right. So what would have that meant for the last two years and the little bit Biden was able to get done with the 50 seat Senate like majority, quote unquote, only majority if you include Kamala Harris as the tie breaking vote? Only a majority while Joe Biden is president. Now is a 51 seat majority, but at the time was only a 50 seat majority with Kamala Harris splitting the vote. And that's not even talking about the negative press the Republicans got. So I, 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 I do think that she's kind of underselling the downsides here. There, there was no there were no children who weren't going to get their welfare checks. You know, no one was going to go hungry. Nobody was going to be evicted. You know, it was just Nancy Pelosi, one of the richest women in America, not getting to hold the gavel for the. 15th year, however long she's been speaking Do you have a problem with women in power? When they're named... (laughs) Jesus, Fosh. 
I also, I do also want to say that every single time they have to like fill a day full of like like congressional votes again not only is humiliating for the party but the longer you have to do these votes the longer government isn't like you're not able to pass any laws because you don't have anybody a speaker nancy pelosi <laughs> yes 100 <laughs> percent do so you see what i mean and my same thing with the 2020 stuff it's like fine you don't want to vote third party fine but at very least can we like be cool like can we like can we try to b bluff a little bit and try to get a little something for our votes before you bend the knee for Joe Biden? We've got Bernie dropped out in April. The election's in November. Can we wait till like July before we all pledge fidelity to Biden for the rest of our lives? Look, we all we all have angles we approach this from. For me, and again, you know, I, I it's I could go on about this, but I think I feel like the battle for this country's longevity in terms of its democratic institutions is being lost or is lost. Um, and it's really just a matter of time. And I don't think the Democrats have the wherewithal or the um, the lefties the strength to do anything sufficient to keep that from happening. And my hope is that um, whatever happens as a product of that, you know, you'll see this reciprocal blowback against uh, a conservative ideology that would give us the venue for broader change. Mm. So, for example, and, and, you know, I'm not I'm not going I'm, to I'm going to not Godwin's law for once. You know, um, we've seen a, uh, a historically a resurgence in some Latin American countries after U.S. backed uh, fascist dictators uh, were finally ousted or democratically removed. Right. Um, Chile has seen a pretty dramatic leftward shift over time. Lula has, you know, been a national, international hero in, in the Brazil. Really, uh, honestly, most of the things that Brianna Joy Gray wants to do, like when it comes to like the big ass, we're just going to have to get more progressives in Congress to do it. Because we're going to just need more leverage and make up a larger part of the party if we're going to have speakers that are more and more progressive. Uh, we can, if the votes are slim, try to make demands, but we can't demand uh, the entire house in the sink from a position of like four or five congressional votes. It's just not going to happen. And that's what we were talking about when we we're talking about forced to vote too. It was like four or five people. Like it was like AOC, Elhan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, Ayanna Presley. We weren't working with a lot of people here either. Still, albeit, you know, one with some challenges, but we love him anyway. Um, even right now with Ukraine, ever since the Euromaidan in 2014, the country has moved leftward in large part because they wanted to distinguish themselves from Russia, which is a more conservative country. I think that the voters have a short memory and generally aren't that bright, which is unfortunately a product of our lacking political education. And they tend to react very reflexively to the pressures they see in their time. And my hope is that whatever happens next with the conservatives, the, the goal will be to milk that politically all the way home. And you use that to build a strong left base. What the Democrats didn't do in 2020, of course, was sufficiently work with the Jan 6 stuff, right? I mean, look at what Lula is doing over in Brazil. Uh, the Bolsonaristas, they invade the three houses of the federal government immediately. Whew, they are arrested. Uh, Lula goes on TV. He talks about how they are terrorists, um, how they are cowards. He says the police were complicit in the insurrection attempt, which is phenomenal. And he says he's going to make an example of them. Fantastic stuff. I mean, this, I think, will really bolster his support in the long run. It's a strong response. Jan 6 happens, the Democrats limp-wristedly just sort of, I mean, what? What happened? Nothing has happened. Nothing has happened to anyone. Um, Part of this is a consequence, I think, of our, you know, highly federated system. But also, I think well, the they, they voted to increase uh, police funding. Right. We got more capital police. There we go. God bless. <laughs> We're safe forevermore. The point I'm getting at here is just I think you, you work with these 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 like critical moments and we don't have one right now because you kind of need a. a um, a central point. You need a leader or an event you can orient it yeah. around. Bernie is you, out. At you the gotta moment. make one, Vash. No, well, you, you, got, you, you gotta you, make one. You, uh, you make one or you respond to an existing one, and that takes time and effort. And I, uh, I support efforts to build that, but we need to be respectful of our place in history because if we try to overplay mm. our hand, it may, no, we have to. If we overplay what's the our line, hand, what's the line between being respectful of our place in history and? abdicating one's responsibility to try to make change happen you is it is it god hope helps those who helps themselves or is it we're sitting around waiting for a miracle no you always be acting i mean like okay the medicare for all movement medicare for all would be one of the biggest government programs in the country if we were to actually get it passed and we just do not have enough people in congress who support it 
you would need to do something like this on the back of like a massive campaign. And I don't think something that has basically zero chance of passing is something you, you make these big risks on. So I do think Vosh does have a point when you're talking about your place in history. We are just not there yet. That doesn't mean we sit here and do nothing. It's that we do the work necessary to get us there. But if I'm building a house, right, I don't start with the roof. I start with the foundation. And we have only put down like three planks so far when it comes to Medicare for all. But you have to be active in the right direction. I'm very defensively oriented at the moment. Well, that's, not, that's the not thing. Not mind you by choice. That, I don't I'm like sorry, that. but that's why forced to vote is an issue. Because well, we don't get many opportunities, and but, that but was one. And half the left chose to bury it. But this is what I mean with it keep coming up, because that was years ago now, and I'm here no, today. No, it was 10 days ago that well, we that had a validation. that was their forced to vote. That was their forced to vote, right, not ours. It's front of my, and it, it happens again and again. I can go through a bunch of other examples. I don't want to bore people in this podcast because I just did this in the last episode, but the silent on Pramila Jayapal whipping progressives not to hold up the spring of 2021 COVID relief bill over the extraction of a $15 minimum wage out of it by Chuck Schumer. Too abstract for the average voter, but I agree in principle. The average the, voter, we're talking fish IQ here. We got to rattle their, their little goldfish bowls. We got to shake them up, I, you know? I think that I, I we might just, we obviously disagree about this. I think that we coddle the public. I think that we patronize the public. I think that we don't respect our voters. I think the voters know that they should deserve a $15 minimum wage. I think that they can understand the parliamentarian is a position that is not elected. They can be fired. Their advice can be ignored. And the Democratic Party chose. Oh, so his other route, so the route that she wanted was firing the parliamentarian, replacing the parliamentarian with somebody else. So the parliamentarian could then say that we could do $15 minimum wage through budget reconciliation. Through budget reconciliation. Did Joe Manchin sign? I still don't think Joe Manchin, $15 minimum wage. Joe Manchin, $15 minimum wage. Even with her on board, you would still need Joe Manchin on. Manchin says he doesn't support raising minimum wage to $15 an hour. So even if you were to get, even if you were to get the, the, and this is another problem I didn't talk about was, was that, that the, the staff was saying, um, I forget what her name was. She just said the name of the, of the staff member. Let's hear it again. Serve a $15 minimum wage. I think that they could understand the parliamentarian. Yeah. The, 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 the Senate parliamentarian, the parliamentarian said, no, that this is not legal. You, you cannot do the. $15 minimum wage through budget reconciliation. You would need separate legislation to do this under. Uh, so you would need to either A, uh, get rid of the filibuster and uh, pass it uh, that way as a separate bill, or B, you would have to get 60 votes. You still don't have mansion. And if you don't have mansion, you don't have $15, even if you were to fire and rehire a different uh, parliamentarian. So let's say we fire the parliamentarian and we do what she's advising, we still don't win because we still need mansion. So, I mean, again, uh, this is a good idea in theory, but in practice, it wouldn't have worked. Is a position that is not elected, they can be fired, their advice can be ignored, and the Democratic Party chose to turn a 50 vote. I will say this still, this would have been a lot better than forcing the vote on Medicare for all, though situation to a 60 vote situation so they I, wouldn't have I to pass a $15 minimum wage. 20% of voting Americans at most know what the filibuster is. 5% the And whose fault is that? Oh, no, I agree. I'm just saying, working with the environment we're in right, right but, now, it's pretty tough to sell them but, on the nuances. But, instead, but Vosh, if, if people never make that argument, that remains the case forever. No, but Republicans make... have trained, the Republicans have all become experts on the IRS in the last two weeks because Republicans well, decided to make it their issue. It, again, the political education here is lacking severely. And this is one of the big issues I have with Biden. Actually, it's the main issue. God's honest truth. I don't give a, a, a damn about all the bad policy or whatever. Uh, I expected this from him. You know, I expected him to be bad. I don't really care. He's been marginally better than I expected, which was bad. Great. The main thing that bothers me is that the Democratic Party is voiceless, utterly silent. Every moment of every day, if you as a Republican voter want to hear what the news is on your party or what thing you should be angry about or which minority group you think is ruining America, like... You can go on which color M&M, &M? which color M&M &M is ruining America, which color M&M &M is grooming your children into being transgender. 
Um, you can go on any number of Trans sites, or talk to any number of people, or look at any number of politicians, and they are keeping you up to date. For Democrats, this isn't the case. AOC does better than most with the Insta feed stuff. Sure. But even that's that's like the bar, right? Like the the fact that Biden is virtually silent means that there isn't a unifying voice, like we had back with 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 Bernie for a long time. Uh, sure. He's just he's just too old now, you know. Uh, but but that's what I mean about the, creating these moments. You know, it's not about being passive or anything. It's just I I man I I feel so, like we're in a really rough position right now. So I, I, so I agree, but but I, I just want to. I know this seems like a, such a small point, Fosh, but like when I just said the thing about a fifteen dollar minimum wage, like fighting over that, or like fighting over the bifurcation of the Build Back Better bill or whatever, mm -hmm. your instinct was to say, okay, but the voters aren't going to understand it anyway. The and specifics I, of that but, situation but, but, but wait, no, wait a, a bit. bit. So you say the voters aren't going to understand it anyway. I say, well, that's part of the project that that's the politician's job is to make them understand it and to bring these kinds of things up regularly enough so they get to understand them. And you seem to agree with that. But but in effect, I would just put to you humbly, I would put to you that the effect of constantly pivoting to, well, no one's going to do it. Like it comes off as an excuse for why people shouldn't act. And over and over again, I've noticed on the left that there is this energy that says, well, things aren't going to work or things are going to be hard. Or the first time we try this, it's not going to work. So we shouldn't do it anyway. That ultimately serves to absolve the few kind of progressive people we have in Congress of doing anything at all. And I think has the effect of stymieing movement energy. Okay. I don't, I don't disagree with that. Hey, YouTube. Thanks for watching. Just Honestly, man, look, I don't disagree with Brianna that maybe they could have gotten more concessions uh, and forced the vote on something. But forced the vote was, and, I, and this is my main complaint about this video, was not about forced to vote on anything, forced to vote on something that would have helped the American people. It was forced to vote on Medicare for All. That's what Brianna rallied around. That's what Jimmy rallied around. If you look at any of the, if you look up any article about forced to vote, whether it's The Hill or any publication covering it, they're not covering forced to vote on a bill that empowers unions, not forced to vote on legislation to legalize marijuana, it's forced to vote on Medicare for All, something that had no chance of passing. And if we blocked the speakership uh, over, we would have either led to uh, Nancy Pelosi's speakership being delayed for something that would have failed anyway, Medicare for All, so it would have been embarrassing for the Democrats, would have made us look how the Republicans did for like a good four or five days, uh, making us look like we can't govern, which is a stereotype for Democrats that we need to we need to throw off. We need to kick that off. The Republicans have been undermining that attack on us through their uh, government shutdowns and, and what they recently did that's that's undermining their ability to do that, not to mention their lack of respect for institutions and Donald Trump actively undermining institutions. And it would have made Medicare for all just be that thing people remembered as, oh, yeah, that was that thing that Democrats like those progressive Democrats fought for and then failed like immediately. Like it just didn't work. I'm, yeah, I remember that that thing that failed. That's what it would be remembered for. And I don't think that's worth uh, forcing the vote getting worse committing positions f over most likely and nothing nothing comes of it if we were going to force the vote we should force the vote on something that was achievable or had a better chance of achieving like marijuana legalization even though that most likely wouldn't have succeeded and at a higher likelihood had more people signed on we already have the majority of americans living in states uh where marijuana is legal and it, it's even more popular as well so I just, I just straight up disagree. I disagree with Brianna Joy Gray's recreation of how the discussion went. Uh, even if I generally agree that forcing the vote generally isn't bad, but on Medicare for all, it was bad.